What's up guys, I am Warmaster Moloch and today I am introducing you to one of your new best friends and that is the new Skink Oracle hero that has been introduced with the Silence and the Fury DLC and has immediately become one of the best heroes in the game. You can see him right here and straight away you'll see one of the reasons why he's one of the best heroes in the game because look at the size of that chonky boy right there. He comes on the new Troglodon dinosaur unit and that immediately makes him extremely powerful and a great asset to Oxyotl and anyone else who's using him actually. Let's have a look at his skills and his abilities so you can get an idea of how good he is and then I'm going to take you through the skill queue so that you can learn how to level him up to his absolute best and turn him into the absolute beast that he is. So let's get to it. First thing you want to notice here, plenty of armor, leadership is decent, he's fast. That's very important. He's fast and he's got good mass. So this is a unit that can barrel roll straight through enemy infantry to good effect and get away from them very quickly. Poison attack, so they'll be slower after you've done that. Decent melee defense. Massive weapon strength, including really solid armor piercing. If you can show me the stat on that, I'd appreciate it. Well, I did have the stat up earlier on. There we go. 330. And also missile strength, because this is a ranged unit too. It has a poison spit attack. Not huge range, not huge ammunition, but it works. It's very powerful, and it has the poison effect. And it's armor piercing. So this is a really strong mid-range artillery piece, basically. Plus it's a caster, plus it's a dinosaur, so it's good at fighting too. As you can see here, if we pass along, gives you encourage. Also causes fear and terror. Get resilience in swamp and desert, whatever. It's also a siege attacker, though. That is fantastic for you. This is a great all-round hero to have in your army and at that cost right there you want them in your armies 592 upkeep you don't want them hanging around doing anything on the campaign map you want them embedded in the armies where you can use all these fantastic traits and also importantly their skills and the next part of this video is going to be taking you through the skill tree so that you level them up to best effect so let's head across there now so the first skill, obviously, you're going to buy here. I've got one skill point available on him. You're going to buy Fireball because that unlocks your magic line. Why go straight for magic? Well, if you're an experienced Warhammer 2 player, that's an obvious question. Magic is super powerful. His spell line doesn't look great, but actually it's very useful. The main thing, though, we have to go back to what I said before, which was... At the cost of one of these units, you don't want to be using them on the campaign map. And they're dinosaurs, so they're already pretty good at fighting. So you don't want to go straight in for the combat skills. So I want you to ignore these four here. Assault Unit, Wound, Assault Garrison and Specialist. Don't worry about them. And leave the combat stuff till last. We're going straight in with Fireball. So you put one point into Fireball straight away. And then the next point that you're going to put in depends very much on what kind of army you're going to be putting together. So for Oxyotl, who's got this at the start, this hero at the start, my recommendation is put the first three points or the next three points into Flock of Doom. It's not a hugely powerful spell, but it is a good one to use against blobs of infantry. And that is the emphasis that I went for in my Oxyotl stream because I was coming up against lots of blobs of infantry, but also importantly, I was using an all skink army, which is what you should be doing with Oxyotl. Use an all, an all chameleon skink army. So going for earth blood, while it's useful for your heroes and single entities, at the start you don't have that many of them. Now, if your skink oracle who you're leveling up is going into an all dinosaur army at the start or an all hero army or something that's very heavily weighted towards those then instead of going first three into flock of doom you go first three into earth blood so that you can heal those single entity units earth blood is not quite so good for 
basically mass units, infantry, things like that. You want it for single entities to get the most out of it. For your infantry-based armies or your skirmisher-based armies, in this case, go Flock of Doom for your next three points and then put one into Earth Blood so you have that option to heal up your Skin Coracle, Oxyotl, your General, your other heroes, whatever. Okay, That will then get you through... And it will unlock evasion, but you're not going to go for that next, because up here is Gorilla Fighter, which gives you more speed and Vanguard deployment. That is hugely important for this unit, because getting them in Vanguard means that you can start casting spells on your enemies straight away. So once you're on Tier 7, unlock that immediately. Then on Tier 8, Skill uh, point eight, you go in, or Skill Level 8, I should say, sorry, you go for evasion to unlock the next stage. And then after that, we head along here, and you want to get magical reserves. One of the weaknesses of the Skin Coracle is you don't get Arcane Conduit. So you want to get as much magic out of these as you can. So the next one is magical reserves. Then you go for Wild Heart to get increased to power reserves and improved power recharge rate. Basically to maximize the amount of magic that you've got. Then you head along and you stick another point into Earth Blood. And then the next one you go for is Telepathic Connection. Telepathic Connection is basically a single use of Comet of Cassandora. Now that spell is very easily dodged, but if you can get an enemy bogged down, basically by charging your Skin Coracle into it with your Dinosaur, your Troglodon, cast that into there. It does a huge amount of damage to Blobs. Absolutely massive. And if you double that up with a fully leveled up Flock of Doom, that is going to trash the blob that you're fighting in. Especially bearing in mind that they're going to be suffering from fear and terror because they've got a dinosaur in the middle of them, poisoning them and kicking the living crap out of them. It's very, very good. Next one you want to go with is finish off your Earth Blood uh, with Earth Blood 3. That's got you on to tier 13, by the way, for this skin coracle. And next one. Agility of the Lizard, because the Troglodon is very big, it's a massive, massive target for missiles. So getting that extra missile resistance is important. And then you go for Natural Camouflage, which is an absolute meme for Skin Coracles. Why? Because in my live stream playing as Oxyotl, we had a Skink Priest, uh, not a Skink Priest, sorry, a Skink Chief stood next to my Skink Oracle on his Troglodon. With a natural camouflage, which gives you extra speed, but also stalk, they could see the Skink Chief. They couldn't see the sodding great dinosaur that was stood right next to it. So they could see this little tiny lizard boy, but not the gigantic monster lizard that was stood right next to him. And welcome to round two of Spot the Dinosaur. How's Oxyotl of all things what they've spotted first? Like, seriously, they haven't spotted this guy. They spotted this guy. This guy, they spotted. This guy, no. Nah. That seems totally legit. Makes absolute sense. It was ridiculous, and it throws up the option for you to use that to cast Flock of Doom and do a huge amount of damage without being spotted. And then when they start to chase you, you're fast enough to get away and be hidden again. So you definitely want to go all the way through and basically natural camouflage. As soon as it's available to you, you open that up at rank 15. Those are your essentials. OK, those are the ones that you absolutely have to have. After that, it becomes a bit dealer's choice. Um, my recommendation after that is to go down through increase mobility and stimulate growth. Those are the next priorities. As soon as you hit 20, obviously you're going to stop and put immortality in there so that you don't lose your fantastic hero. And then you finish off whichever one you were going with second. Now, this also is a matter of dealer's choice. If you're looking to play a more traditional campaign and build up territory, then stimulate growth can be superb because you can get up to an additional 30 growth in a settlement. Since the nerfs, Growth in settlements is really low nowadays, so that can be hugely beneficial to you. Lizards also don't grow very fast. But if you're doing the Oxyotl thing where you're just constantly on tour, wiping out chaos and 
killing the enemies that you've been assigned on the origins or the uh, sorry messages from the old ones uh, visions of from the old ones map then you go for increased mobility but after that you probably want to go with the growth as well and as i say as soon as you hit rank 20 take a time out and hit immortality then go back and finish whichever one you were emphasizing second here then after that it's pretty much completely dealer's choice you want to go into your combat line and you want to go through things like obviously you go for divinatory authority just to unlock this line and then you go with the venomous spit because you can get plus 15 missile strength and plus 15 range for your spit attacks and then choose what you want of armor or melee attack i personally go for armor then i immediately unlock primeval roar so that i can get to fleet footed because that extra plus 15 percent speed makes the troglodon that your skin coracle is mounted upon an absolute rocket and then one more to go into there so you can get swiftness of itzel which is an explosion spell which gives you extra speed as well and lets you escape those melee blobs that you might have plunged yourself into so you can get more blobs for flock of doom telepathic connection stuff like that and from then on it's really down to you do you want extra magic resistance go for it do you want to come back in and get life bloom that's a good one that's worth going for i don't consider it a huge priority but it's worth having you can if you want go for other spells like maybe you put another point into fireball maybe you go for wind blast personally i don't prefer wind blast i think that flock of doom is much better but yeah that is my preferred running order for skink oracles at least in terms of the essentials and the next tier the mobility and growth and immortality and how i like to level up the early stages of their combat from then on just stick in whatever points you really fancy what i'm going to do at the end of the video is i'm going to put those together as like a visual aid memoir for you so you can just look at that and see what running order i was recommending but that's it guys thank you very much for watching i hope you found this helpful and that it helps you in your campaigns with the new skink oracle hero in the future if you have enjoyed this or you found it helpful please hit like or subscribe and yada 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 don't let youtubers tell you what to do as i always say i'm going to stick that aid memoir up as i said right now and i shall see you in the next video guys thank you very much